Don't run in reviews. Welcome back to John's Random Review. I finally finished it. The Makita, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase that, the Mega Makita Kettle. Um, if you look back on my videos, I bought this actually four months ago and I've adapted it and I hope to say improved it. You might think it's a fool's errand. It's a fool's er er errand, but nevertheless, we're going to go through all the modifications I've made to this um, amazing Makita kettle. Now, I use this every single day to make brews. Hang on a minute. So, it works fine. I've had a, first of all, I've had a, a few problems with the, the making of this. I've made some mistakes. I've made some, some kind of like changes that have kind of popped in my head that have improved it. And I've also made some stupid, stupid errors, which you're going to go into. It's kind of like a full disclosure sort of thing, because I did something that was incredibly, incredibly stupid. And I think it's on one of my YouTube shorts that it was nearly the end of it. I nearly had to pack it in because um, I made a, a mess. I made, I, I made a massive mistake. But I always say this, if you make a mistake about um, something... Yeah, it's going to piss you off, but it's how you get out of the mistake. Not talking about covering it up, I'm talking about figuring out what you did wrong. It was pretty obvious when I go into the video what I did wrong. But anyway, let's get into it. Just a bit of a recap. This is my Makita um, coffee maker, um, which I modified. It must have been a, a year, maybe a year and a quarter ago. So that it's had, this has had fantastic views on my channel. This has been retired. I'm not going to... I couldn't sell this. Honestly, I couldn't sell this. It does work absolutely fine, but if it... I couldn't sell it anyway. And no, I don't know... No one would want to buy it, for starters, but it would... Because um, of the dodgy, the dodgy wiring inside it, I wouldn't be able to sell this. But this is going to go... Um, I'm going to have that forever because it'll be fantastic memories. So, if you come in a bit cameraman, we'll go through this, what I've done with this. Okay, I know it looks a bit crazy, but everything serves a purpose. So, the only thing, that, first of all, let's talk about the actual um, kettle. What modifications have I done with the actual kettle? Well, not much really. I'm going to put a little clip in now um, about me actually me insulating it between this plastic coating here and um, the stainless steel inside. You can see, what's that? Going, the gap is going to be about half an inch there. So that has been filled up with act with fixer foam. So apart from that, there's no changes. But apart from oh sorry, I forgot about this. Been coming cameraman up up above. You can see that little hole. What is that all about? I'll come into that a bit later on. Right. So this machine normally when you buy it from the shops. I think it's um, about 150 quid or something, I don't, something like that. If that's wrong, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. But this is a 36 volt kettle, but it uses two 18 volt um, batteries. This is um, one of my 18 volt Makita batteries. This is the most powerful one you can buy currently in the LXT range, which is a six amp battery. And this machine, if, without the modifications, takes two of these. Now I got to thinking when I got this, I'm always, my brains are always ticking over and I've got oh, mad ideas a lot of the time. And I thought, well, hang on a minute, John, I haven't got that many of these Makita batteries and mainly I use these ones on my power tools. So I've only got about six of the batteries and I've got loads of, as you know, loads of Makita power tools. So I thought, well, it's 36 volt um, kettle, obviously, because it uses two 18 volt batteries to power it. 
to power the element in the kettle. And I thought, what if I could get one of my, L um, one of these batteries? This is the XGT 40 volt max range. Now don't be fooled by the 40 volt max, it's actually a 36 volt battery. I think it only runs, when you get it out of the charge, it's fully charged, I think it runs 40 volts for just a very, very short time, but this is really a 36 volt battery. Now I've got um, some LXT tools, but I don't use them all the time because they are fantastic, but they're very powerful, powerful tools and they only come out when I've got a really big job. So a lot of the, these batteries are just generally sat in my, one of my Makita boxes waiting to be used. So I thought, I wonder if I could get this battery, the XGT 40 volt um, Makita battery to run my 36 volt kettle. Anyway, from, from there to here, it's been a hell of a trip, I tell you. Hell of a trip because I had to work out how to do the wiring and how to mount the batteries. Now, come in a little bit and we'll go through a little bit. You can see, um, if you find some pictures, I might put a picture of the kettle before it's modified. I've put this panel in here and um, that's made out of sort of like an aluminium sheet. I think that's quite quite a tidy sort of um sort of like panel there and it well i'm not gonna say it looks factory but yeah i like to think it is well let's turn it round. this is where the madness starts this is where the madness starts right on the top of here is an xgt usb charger that i've actually modified what i've been mean modified i've taken all the gubbins outside of it and i've actually actually buried it into another panel there so that looks factory and then the battery just sits in there. Perfect. Now the next thing is come down a little bit and now then what, what I was what I thought is I've got my um battery on, but I'm not I'm not using these two um ports for the 18 volt batteries anymore. What can I do to um use the space there? So this is what I've do, done. Now these are used to be um batteries but now they are receptacles for my coffee and sugar so what i've done is hold out hold out the battery and i've got a little glass sort of like it i think it's a spice jar and if you look in there that's my sugar so that's my sugar so i can have a little bit of a bit only have like, listen to me i only have like half a scoop of sugar in my coffee i don't like it to not one of these that has like 10 sugars but anyway in the other makita what it's not called a receptacle, receptacle. Makita jar, maybe, um, is my coffee granules. Back to what I said, I love uh, freeze-dried coffee. Don't ask me why, some people hate it. But as you can see the, um, what a fantastic, well, I think I've done a fantastic job of that. Look at these stickers. These are one-off Makita 18 volt John's Random Review stickers that are made by a chap. I think it's on eBay. I might put a link or something or tell his name. He's actually from Blackpool near me. And he um, printed them out and so I could funk up the batteries. Okay, let's get to this bit of item. You might, oh God, you might remember this. This is the little holder for my milk. I need a new Makita sticker on there. I need to get a teal one, don't I? Not a red and black one. Anyway, in the morning when I get, make a big work, put I fill that full of milk and that sits in there. This used to sit on my um, coffee machine, just on the end there, but now it sits on this. So that's good. Let's look at the other side. And this is where I store my cup. Look at this, it's even a Makita XGT 40, 40 volt max cup. And wh what I've got it sat on here is one of them little um, belt holders that goes on a drill. So that's that's absolutely handy like that. So it goes on, it goes on and on and on. Quick look at the top, quick look to the top. With um, all these alterations, it's actually added a lot to the weight. And before you used to ha hold on to it here because this was all hollow, but I thought, oh man, how am I gonna do this? And what I've done is taken these li this little, Holdy handle, a holdy handle, is that a word? Anyway, a handle off my black Makita bag that my coffee machine went in. So that's, it's really weighted right. What I mean is it doesn't tip forward or back and that's a great alteration. I know it needs a little bit of a touch up on there. Now this is the most important bit. This is the most complicated bit that I struggle with. As you know, I'm a plumber, I'm not an electrician. So now I take the piss out of electricians, but they are clever and I had to get some serious help with it. 
My first problem when I was thinking about it is, if I put the, the wires from this um, XGT batteries just into the wire terminals that these um, batteries went into, not, not with the coffee and the tea, coffee and the sugar, but proper batteries on there, it has a circuit board in the bottom of it. And what if I blew the circuit board up by, get, by the board getting confused about this battery? So what a friend of mine, a very clever electrician friend, told me was, he needed to set, what you need is a changeover switch. And I said, what the, what's the hell's a changeover switch? And what it is, you can see that, come in a little bit, this isn't a changeover switch, it's actually massive, this switch. How I got it in, I'll put a bit of video in how I got it in, but it was a hell of a struggle. So I've got one way LXT there, and then the other way XGT. So what I've done, I've taken the wiring um, from here and I've taken it into the switch. So when it's on, um, when it's on XGT mode and I put it on, it just sends the power straight through the switch and into the kettle element and it doesn't go through the board. So, and then if I want to use LXT, I flick it over and that goes through the, through the board and, and works as normal. Kind of, I'll go into why this is going back to the problems I've had with this. In theory, I could use it on the two batteries, but I can't at the moment. Okay, now with, the, with, the, with me making all these um, mad alterations and what I've had to do, <laughs> saying about the wiring to kind of do it differently, is when I've got it on the XGT um, mode, which I use every, every single day, three times a day, it doesn't have the safety systems for the battery. It doesn't really recognise the battery. There's no sort of circuit board to say, oh, you're, you're, you're overheating the battery. So let's have a boil of the kettle. And then what we do first is, I've already got some water on it, is just flip that on like that. So that's sending 36 volts into the element. So in a minute, it's going to start making a noise. So let's get... My, then what I do is I get a little bit of coffee and sprinkle that in. And tiny, a tiny little bit of sugar, a tiny little bit of sugar. Man, that's a lot of sugar. Anyway, never mind. Right, I've got me, um, it's mainly sugar in there anyway. So, and then what I've got, I put a bit of milk in. I don't like black, um, coffee and it's too I don't know I don't just don't like it it's too harsh so I've got the milk in there and while we wait for this to boil um, other ultimate alterations or modifications I've done is on the bottom of here it's got like a micro switch because it's much the Makita is saying that it should be always on a, a flat level um, surface but, but it's got like a micro switch and if, it, if it's at a bit of an angle or the base isn't flat it turns off so I got rid of that um, Hang on a minute, can you come in a little bit? Can you hear it boiling, starting to boil? Right, okay. So, in the morning, what I do is I put in some hot water from the tap into this straight away, and with it being insulated, and my first brew is 10 o'clock. So what I figured out is I don't really want to let it completely boil. So remember we were saying about that little hole in the top? What I do is put the, I've got a temperature probe, that, it's one of these little probes where you can check food. Like that. Hang on. Can you see that? Come in a little bit. You can see we're up to 65. Oh God, it's flying up, it's flying up. So you can see it boils it quite quick. And the reason I've, uh, I've got the temperature gauge there is because when it gets to 90 degrees, that is hot enough. That is hot enough. If I let it boil completely and I can see it coming out of the spout, it's too hot. I have to wait a bloody quarter of an hour to have my brew. So what I do is wait till it gets to 90 degrees, and then I turn it off. Remember, if I don't turn it off, if I don't turn it off, it boils up and then it overheats and everything. So I've got, I've got to keep an eye on it. Obviously it does boil, you see the, it come out, the, the um, steam come out of the spout. So are we, are we there yet? We're nearly up to, um, oh, are we, hang on, we're coming up to 80 degrees, another couple of minutes, it will be okay. So, Am I pleased with my creation? We got uh, more than with the coffee machine. This is this is far superior. I honestly, I use this every all day. Well, not all, three times a day, every day. So, um, is it? Oh, hang on a minute. 
Oh, we're at 87. So when it gets to 90 degrees, what well, it won't turn itself off. I've got to turn the switch off on the side. So let's see, nearly there. Bloody, the oh, there we go. So that's turned off there. We can take that out. Let's have a look in the top, just to double check. Just boiled. So we'll get it off the stand. Remember to press this little blue bit in. So, and then, oh yes. There we go, look at that brew. Get me Makita teal um, spoon, that needs a wash. And there we go. There we go, that's what I do every single day at 10 o'clock, about half past 12 and three o'clock. I use my amazing Mega Makita kettle to make me, make me a, a coffee. Okay, let's do the maths. That's the most important. It's all very well it working okay, but does it burn through the batteries? Well, in the morning when I get up, well, about seven o'clock, like I said, I put hot tap water in here. So that'll be about, mm, don't know, let's say 45 degrees for the sake of sake. And uh, what battery I've got is a four amp battery. So at 10 o'clock, that's when brew time is. I switch it on, I boil it to 90 degrees. Like I've said, and it goes down to about this when the, uh, like that three bars when I boiled it at ten o'clock. So well, boil it at say ninety degrees. Now at half twelve, I'll boil it again. So it's still got some heat from ten o'clock, and then I boil it back up again to ninety degrees and have a lovely cup of coffee. So then the next brew for me is three o'clock. Don't always have a, have a brew at three o'clock, but. I have been doing just to test this properly and there's just enough power in the battery to three o'clock i'll be honest with you i don't want to discharge the battery completely and have to hot wire it again because what i've heard that if you do that too many times it, it knackers the battery so if i if i sort of keep an eye on that it's got one bar on there and then i can boil it to about 80 degrees now what i've actually got i'll maybe put on in another video is a bigger battery than this it's a five amp makita battery it's absolutely massive but i was going to use a five amp battery um predominantly for just for that for just for this for this kettle but the four amp one's working fine it nearly do three brews so we'll see i might put the five amp battery on but it's absolutely massive and it's so much heavier than that one anyway for now that's the maths it's does nearly three brews a day on one battery on one xgt battery anyway i hope you've really enjoyed this video and it maybe give you some ideas or you might think i'm a complete madhead or some kind of mad scientist but i'm really pleased with what i've achieved and it just shows if you want to mess about and alter stuff, it's possible, even for some someone like me. But you know what I mean. And anyway, okay. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Random is rad. Rock on. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Unsubscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Tell me you love me. Tell me you hate me. Tell your friends and neighbours. Tell that weird guy from across the street with the one-eyed dog. Tell me anything, but most importantly, let's get 